I'm going to show you using programming how to crop this image. Say somebody uploads this image to your website. I'm going to show you how to crop a perfect square out of the center of it. But you might be saying, hey Adam, what if somebody uploads an image that's shaped like this? And I'll be like, bitches! Same thing. I'll show you how to crop a square right out the middle. But it'll be turned that way. Don't be a doofus. And before we get into the nitty gritty of the code, let me show you and prove to you that it's working. I'm going to use a PNG, so that's uploaded, resized, and cropped. I'm going to press back, choose file, and I'm going to go with this JPEG. That's a definite, distinct, different shape than all the rest. Upload it. Okay, now that one's been uploaded, resized, and cropped. Now I'm going to grab that GIF. That has a different shape than the other two. Okay, that one's been uploaded, resized, and cropped. Okay, let's go into the Uploads folder on our server. And you'll see we have our flowers, girls, and sky, the originals that uploaded. We have our resize flower, resize girls, resize sky. Now we have thumb for flower, thumb for girls, and the thumb for sky. So I'm going to take those and put them in my folder so I can get a good look at them. And here's what I have. So you can see the flower, the girls, and the sky are the originals here. And they all have different shapes, and they're all different types. This is this is PNG, this is JPEG, this is GIF. Now my script takes care of creating a true square thumbnail or whatever shape that I want to make it. PNG file, that's 150 by 150, cut out of the center of this flower. Now you can see the girls, it's a 150 by 150 square cut out of the direct center of this picture. And the sky, same thing. 150 by 150 square, that's a GIF file cut out from the center of this GIF. And that's how cropping works. That's smart cropping right there. Okay, this is how it works. And we're going to stem right off of the last lesson where we created the image resize function and included it into our parsing script. That is our image upload script.php. So we just included that file and we run a custom function that's inside of it, feeding it specialized variables. All right, now. We're going to go under that function inside of this image upload script and we're going to run another custom function called AK image thumb and that gets fed five custom variables as well and these are the four variables that are set to go into this function and file extension is the same file extension we're sending to this whatever the file extension is for the file that's being uploaded at the time that's that variable now I'll explain these other four being fed in right here. This first one is the target file. Now what we're doing is we're targeting the resized image because you don't want to target somebody's original upload that might be a huge file. You cut out a 150 by 150 square out of the center of a huge file. You're just going to get a little tiny view of whatever's going on in the picture. It's just going to be a little tiny square cut out of a big giant file. So you want to target the resized image that makes more sense and cut a square out of that one so you get to see more of what's going on in the image after you crop it. And you can play with these numbers, your resize numbers and your crop numbers. Mine is set to 150 width and 150 height. That way it crops a perfect square for me. If I wanted it to crop a rectangle shape, I would maybe make this 100 so it's wider than it is tall. But I want mine a perfect square directly out of the center. Now the next variable is thumbnail and that's going to be the destination file where you want it to live on your server and what its name is going to be. In this case I'm just taking the original upload file name and putting a thumb underscore prefix on it. Just like I did the resized file. So that one will say thumb underscore whatever the file name is. And in later tutorials for this series I'm going to show you guys how to rename uploaded files that people are uploading that way you don't have any conflicts with people having weird characters in their file names or spaces or anything like that. For now we'll just use the original file name and trust me renaming files when they're being uploaded and you're putting them on the server and all that it's really easy to rename them and it's no sweat at all. I'll, I'll discuss different ways that you can rename them. Now the next two variables being fed into this custom function called AK image thumb is the width of the thumb that you want and the height of the thumb that you want. Like I said, mine is 150 by 150 to make sure that it's a square cut. And that's it. So that's all you have to put in your existing upload form. And if you're not using the resize function, 
what you do is you just target the uploaded file. Instead of targeting the resized file, you just target the whatever uploaded file. But normally, in this circumstance, somebody would resize the file, then they would crop it. Because like I said, if you crop a giant picture, you're just going to get a little piece of it. Now I'll show you the function that we're going to put inside of AKPHP Image Library 1.0. And that's an external file that we're including here to run the resize function and the thumb function. So you don't have to include it again for anything else. Once you include it up here, you can access any functions that you put inside of it. So we're going to put another one here. So you can see here we have the resizing function in AKPHP Image Library 1.0 that we created in the last lesson. Let's just go right here and we'll add another function. All right, so there's the new function. Let me get it all into view here so you can see the whole thing. There it is. Function for creating a true thumbnail cropping from any JPEG, GIF, or PNG image files. Now this one works in a very similar fashion to the resizing function that we have up here. Now the only difference is the math, or the values rather, that are put into the image copy resampled function. You have to put different values in there, that way you don't get an exact copy or a resized copy of the original that you're targeting. What we want to do is target the resized copy in this function and set coordinates within the image copy resampled function where it cuts out a nice square in the center of the original image and makes a new image from that. That's what the image copy resampled function does. It takes a source image and creates a new image from coordinates that you set for the source image. So you change the coordinates up a little bit and you'll get a crop instead of a resize. And the key to doing that is right here. So you can see the function, so that we gather the variables that are coming in. Then we can use these variables within our script here. And just like in the last function, we get the original height and original width of the target image, which is the resized image. Then we take that resized image and we want to get the source X point and the source Y point to begin our crop. And to get those numbers is pretty easy. So basically you're taking the original width and the width being the length of any image, and you divide that by two. So you take your target image, you divide its width by two, you divide its length by two. Then you subtract from that the value that you get from taking the width of your crop size and divide it by two. And the same with the height here. So that's how you get the source X and the source Y. Those are the two coordinates that you're gonna need for representing the top left hand corner of your cropped image. So you're basically taking the length and the height of the original image and you're dividing it by two to capture the center point. And you subtract from those values the width and the height divided by two for your new cropped size image. That way the left top corner of your new cropped image doesn't start in the center point of the target image. It'll start offset. This is a way to offset that to where you get an exact center cutout. Now everything else within this function is pretty much the same as the last function. These lines right here I don't have to explain again because I explained them very in depth in the last lesson. Now here and also in the resize function I decided to make a little amendment to the way I was outputting the file saving it to the server. In the last lesson I chose to just use image JPEG which I showed proof of image JPEG outputting a GIF, a PNG, and a JPEG. And we were able to view those files, and they had the correct extension and everything. But I decided to make it more proper by using the extension to evaluate which function I should use to output the file. So if it's a GIF, I'm going to use the image GIF to output. If it's a PNG, I'm going to use image PNG function to output. And if it's a JPEG, then I'm going to use image JPEG to output. It just makes more sense, so we'll change that up a little bit. And we're doing the same thing at the end of this function. So after image copy resampled, which is a very similar thing we did in the resize function, we're just running the code to output it. This, this code outputs the file to the server. It saves it. And that's all she wrote. And you saw a proof of this code working, because this is the exact code that I'm using on my server. My server is running PHP 5 right now. So if you're running PHP 5 on your server, it'll run exactly like mine does. If you're running anything less than PHP 5, 
you might want to think about upgrading or ask your host to upgrade you to PHP 5. Get with the times, man.